before the jam. Who came up with the blindfold? Uh, well, me and Magic. Me and Magic was goofing around, shooting. Uh, we played the Lakers down there, and he was holding his eyes. And uh, he said, he asked me, was I going to be in the dunk contest? He said, what you got for me? I said, I don't know. So I sat there about five more minutes. I said, I'm, 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 I'm going to change what D. Brown did. I'm going to go totally blind. Second year, man, out of Cal State Fullerton, <laughs> going with the blindfold. I'm telling you, Bob, I watched him go back and get his paces together, and I'm looking at this, it's like, what is he thinking about doing? And I'm telling you, when he made it, I saw his excitement, but you should have seen me. I was probably more excited than he was. Remember last year when Michael Jordan made a free throw with his eyes closed? Right. I think he did it in Charlotte, right, in front of his old North Carolina fans. That's exactly right. This topped it. I don't care how you cut it for a guy to go some 45 feet and time it, and not only did he dunk it, but he dunked it. Absolutely the best I've ever seen. Now, what did you like better, that or the Charlotte mascot, the man of teal with the head dunk <laughs> in the stay in school jam? I got to go with the blindfolded dunk. It was outstanding. All right, up next, Magic Johnson talks with Dick Enber as this all-star edition of NBA Showtime continues from the Orlando Arena. Thing from a basketball standpoint to see how sharp he will be. Well, I think that's uh, absolutely true. I think this is a barometer for Irvin because when he goes out and plays, though he has worked out consistently and run miles, he hadn't played against this level of competition consistently. He will have to do that today, and he'll determine, you know, how he feels coming out of this, and he'll have a better idea of what it will be like once he proceeds on to get himself prepared for the Olympics. And as Magic and his Western mates warm up, the Eastern Conference All-Stars have just come out of their locker room and they begin going through their drills at the basket on the opposite end of the Orlando Arena. We're a little bit less than a half hour from the tip-off. Michael, of course, in pursuit of another NBA scoring title and his closest pursuer, Dominique Wilkins, is injured and out for the year, so even though Michael's point average is down from past seasons he's still got a very good chance to lead the league yet again Bob I didn't think it was in jeopardy God bless Dominique even when he was ready because when Michael's ready to get it done he can do it with anybody today 15,000 plus at the Orlando Arena will enjoy the best of the NBA's magic 25 of the game's greatest stars are in today's program, each ready to showcase his ability in front of an audience splashed with its own marquee names. And the top attraction today in Orlando is Magic. Urban Magic Johnson of the Lakers, the NBA's premier playmaker for more than a decade. The 12-time All-Star announced his retirement in a shocking revelation last November and today plays competitively for the first time since and perhaps for the last time in the NBA. It's a game, a day of tribute for the sport's top stars, an NBA day of magic in Orlando. Hello everyone, I'm Dick Henberg. Welcome to the Orlando Arena. If the NBA is uh, the magic kingdom of basketball, then the 25 stars you're about uh, to see today are their royal court. And they'll have the sleight of hand and they'll delight us, I'm sure, throughout the next two and a half hours. A man who has seen this game firsthand from the coaching position, my partner today, Mike Fratello. Here he is four years ago, the head coach of the Atlanta Hawks, the coach of the East that day, and led by Michael Jordan, Fratello's team won that All-Star Classic. And now he joins me today. Boy, just a couple years with NBC, you've really aged. It happens working with guys <laughs> like you and Marv Albert. Okay? <laughs> All right, now you can give us a line on these players. How serious are they about winning this All-Star game? The, the players realize that this is the fans' weekend. They've come to see the best of the NBA, so showtime is definitely on their mind. Pleasing the people is one thing, but winning is paramount to everyone. Both coaches have said that the last five minutes, the best five players will be on the floor. And I guarantee you this, they'll be playing hard. So they'll turn up the volume the final five minutes. And Mike, what are you going to be looking for the first five minutes? Early in the game, I would expect the Magic Isaiah show to dominate. Both players want to create that enthusiasm, excitement in the crowd, want to get it going early, so it'll be a wide open throttle. There's been an undercurrent throughout the course of this week here in Orlando that the West not only wants to win the game, but they'd like to send Magic Johnson home with that most valuable player trophy. What are your thoughts? Well, during the 88 All-Star game, I remember Larry Bird saying to me, don't worry about me, meaning minutes, 
shots attempted. Back in that game, 88 in that afternoon, Jordan had already won the slam dunk competition. He got 40 points that game, was MVP. The players had a sense he was on a roll. Great players are unselfish. I think without saying a word, they realize that this is Magic's moment. Arguably the greatest athletes of all are ready to go and to meet them now let's go to the uh, well this is uh, just before the start of today's game and uh, Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson they said despite uh, the condition of Magic Johnson that they would handle everything just as they always have they're going to touch and we're going to kiss and we're going to congratulate and when Magic tries to drive down the lane I'm going to be right on his elbows. Magic Johnson and of course he has been the focus of uh, the national and international press throughout the course of this week and he's handled himself in typical uh, Magic Johnson manner and now for the introduction of the starting lineups here is Paul Porter. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Orlando Arena and the 42nd annual NBA All-Star Game. Now, let's meet the 1992 NBA Eastern Conference All-Stars. The head coach of the Eastern Conference All-Stars from the defending NBA champion, Chicago Bulls, Phil Jackson. Right. His assistant coaches are Tex winner, John Fox and Jim Clemens, the trainer for the East team. Representing the host Orlando Magic is Lenny Courier. <laughs> Playing for the Eastern Conference, the NBA's all-time leader in three-point field goals. This five-foot-ten guard currently ranks among the league leaders in scoring assists and steals. From the Washington Bullets, making his first All-Star Game appearance, Michael Adams. Playing in his fourth All-Star game, a talented scorer and rebounder and one of the finest passing centers in the NBA from the Cleveland Cavaliers, Brad Doherty. A clutch scorer as well as a three-time selection to the NBA's all-defensive team. He has led his team to five straight trips to the Eastern Conference Finals and two NBA championships from the Detroit Pistons, Joe Grubar. One of the league's most talented young forwards, he currently leads the Boston Celtics in both scoring and steals, making his all-star game debut, Reggie Lewis. Also playing in his second all-star game, this playmaker has come back from a career-threatening knee injury this season and currently leads the league in free throw shooting from the Cleveland Cavaliers, Mark Rice. The two-time defending NBA Defensive Player of the Year and currently leading the rebounder in the league. Playing in his second all-star game from the Detroit Pistons, Dennis Rodman. From the Atlanta Hawks, playing in place of injured teammate Dominique Wilkins, this seven-footer is currently the second-leading rebounder in the NBA and has emerged as one of the league's top inside scorers this season, playing in his first All-Star game, Kevin Willis. And now the starters for the East team. And forward playing in his sixth straight All-Star game, one of the game's most imposing inside players. He is once again among the league leaders in scoring, rebounding, and field goal percentage this year from the Philadelphia 76ers, Carl Barkley. At center, a six-time All-Star and one of the league's most dominant players. He has sparked to revitalize New York Knicks into first place in the Atlantic Division, Patrick Ewing. Starting in place of the injured Larry Bird, playing his second All-Star game, a versatile 6-7 forward.